If online privacy is important to you, then the chances are that you're probably watching this video through a VPN. Virtual private networks are viewed as an essential tool to encrypt your traffic and avoid being snooped on. However, should we really be so trusting of large and centralized VPN providers? Is there perhaps an alternative decentralized option? Well, yes, yes there is. It's called the ORCID protocol, and in this video, I'm going to give you everything you need to know about it. Now, just two quick things before we get underway. My name is Guy, and I am many things. However, the one thing that I am not is a financial advisor. This is presented purely as an educational resource. And also, if you're new to this channel, then you should probably go ahead and subscribe. Oh, and turn on those notifications to make sure you're getting the latest and greatest from the Bureau. All clear? Groovy. Onwards with ORCID. ORCID is a pretty unique project that has developed a decentralized blockchain-based virtual private network, or as they call it in the white paper, a decentralized market for anonymous communications. There's also a good chance that you may not have heard of the ORCID protocol or its OXT token until very recently. However, a recent announcement by Coinbase Pro that they will be listing OXT has spurred a great deal of interest. This is because it's quite unusual for an exchange like Coinbase to list a token that's just out of the gates. They're generally pretty cautious when it comes to the newer projects. However, if you follow the ORCID backstory, you'll discover that it's anything but a simple cryptocurrency project. It's raised quite a bit of money from VCs and accredited investors over the past two years. There's also a pretty star-studded team behind the project. More on this later. To start off with, though, I want to quickly touch on VPNs and why we should consider a decentralized alternative. For those of you who don't know what a VPN is, here's a quick rundown. A virtual private network is an encrypted connection to another network over the internet. This is usually a connection to another server. You're then able to browse the internet using the connection of that server. So if that server is in another country, it looks like you're browsing from another location. Moreover, because a VPN connection is encrypted, no one can see what you're browsing, not your ISP, the government, or any other online snoop. Now, this is just a simple explanation, and I've linked to some resources below if you want to dig into it a bit more. There are countless VPN providers that have developed computer programs, mobile apps, and other clients. You then use these clients to connect to the broader network of the VPN provider and browse from a location that you see fit. You pay the VPN provider a monthly subscription. They promise to keep you safe with a no logs policy and the best in class security. I see one central problem with this model, with central being the operative word. Basically, you have to place a lot of faith in the VPN provider and hope that they are honest and that they can guard your privacy competently. Of course, this is a dubious proposal for those ardent privacy advocates. There have also been quite a few examples of where VPN providers have broken that faith. For example, some may remember the Hide My Ass saga from back in the day. Long story short, this aptly named VPN provider handed over logs and user information to the US authorities, a move which angered many users. Then more recently, you had a security breach that was reported at NordVPN, one of the largest VPN providers in the world. So it's quite clear that centralized VPN services may not be as safe and secure as they are initially thought to be. It's also important to remind ourselves that many people who use VPNs do so from inside repressive regimes. If a hacker can spy on your connection, what's to say that regime's cyber spies can't? Against this backdrop, we're now presented with ORCID, a unique and ingenious decentralized VPN network. The ORCID network is built from open source software on the Ethereum blockchain. It's a decentralized VPN that allows users on the network to buy a bandwidth from a global pool of providers. That's the simple explanation. But let's take a look at each of the core components of the network, shall we? Firstly, you have the ORCID app. 
This is the VPN client that you'll use on your device, phone, PC, etc. This is the program that will allow you to connect to the ORCID network and customize your connection settings. It's not too dissimilar in function to that of a normal VPN client, although this app includes a cryptocurrency private key. This is the key that's used in order to sign transactions when buying bandwidth with OXT. Another really important part of the network is the ORCID protocol. This is the custom protocol that the ORCID software is designed to use when connecting to the network. It's similar to the OpenVPN protocol, except that it allows users to request access to remote network resources and pay for these resources using ORCID nanopayment system. This nanopayment system is a really interesting component of the ORCID network. It was specifically designed to handle the high transaction throughput demands of the ORCID network. It's essentially an ORCID off-chain scaling solution to address the throughput restrictions on the Ethereum main chain. In simple terms, nanopayments allow VPN clients to pay node operators in OXT tickets for the bandwidth used, packet by packet. It's a probabilistic payment system where instead of sending, say, $1 directly, you send a 1% chance of a node winning $100. This is a very simplistic explanation, but I have linked to the additional resources on nanopayments below. The main thing that you need to take away from the probabilistic nanopayments is that it's not only highly scalable, but it also reduces service provider fees. These service providers are the ORCID nodes that rent out their bandwidth. ORCID nodes maintain registration information in a stake registry and provider directory on Ethereum. These providers also have to stake OXT in order to run these nodes. And speaking of staking, the ORCID protocol uses a pretty unique consensus mechanism. It uses a derivative of proof of stake called stake weighting. Bandwidth providers stake OXT in time lock deposits to prove identity and receive traffic in proportion to relative stake deposit size. Stake weighting is intended to allow the economic security of the ORCID network to scale linearly with the size of the total deposited stake. Okay, okay, that was a lot to take in. If any of this is unclear to you, then there are plenty of helpful links which you can find below. Now, I've mentioned this OXT cryptocurrency quite a bit, so this is a great segue into that. OXT is an ERC20 token that was released earlier this month. As the utility token on the ORCID network, it serves two primary purposes. Firstly, users will pay for the amount of bandwidth that they consume on the ORCID protocol with OXT. This is a pay-as-you-go system and they will only pay for actual usage. Secondly, OXT is used by the bandwidth providers, read nodes, to stake on the network. This provides an important economic incentive for the providers. The more OXT that they stake, the more chance they have of being rewarded in the network. It also means that these nodes have skin in the game and are dissuaded from any dishonest behavior. Now, as mentioned in the beginning, Orchid Labs did raise considerable private investor funding through a SAFT sale. For those who don't know, SAFT is the acronym for a simple agreement for future tokens, basically a legal security agreement offered to accredited investors. According to regulatory filings, Orchid Labs has raised over $40 million from a number of well-known VCs, including Sequoia Capital, Anderson Horowitz, Blockchain Capital, and a few others. These eventually led to the issue of the OXT tokens, which are the type that can now be bought on the open market. And while we're on this point, it's worth mentioning that there were quite a few concerns about this from a retail investor perspective. Some questioned whether OXT was being offloaded on the open market by these early investors. While these concerns may just be stipulations, it's wise not to dive right in until volatility subsides and price discovery takes its course. Anyways, the total supply of OXT is 1 billion and there is no inflation. In fact, there is slight deflationary pressure on the token. This is because contractual penalty mechanisms will burn OXT and take them out of circulation. In terms of the security of the OXT smart contract, it has been externally audited by two third parties. These include Consensus and Satora, so that's a strong vote of confidence. Now, when it comes to trading, OXT is currently only listed on Coinbase Pro. As mentioned, this was the launch exchange and trading has only been live for a few days. 
Despite this, there appears to be quite a bit of volume taking place. Here are Coinbase Pro's OXT USD order books. Decent liquidity and relatively deep. This implies easy execution with limited slippage. Of course, it would be great to see the token listed on other exchanges. Not only will this spread the liquidity, but it will also aid in that price discovery I mentioned earlier. In terms of storage, this is an ERC20 token, so any wallet that supports Ethereum can be used. Let's switch gears now and take a quick look at the team behind Orchid, shall we? The Orchid protocol is being built by Orchid Labs, which is based in San Francisco. The CEO and co-founder of the Orchid protocol is Stephen Waterhouse, aka Seven. He's been a leader in the blockchain and tech industries for several years. For example, he was a partner at Pantera Capital from 2013 to 2016, as well as having served on the board of Bitstamp until 2016. He also has a PhD in engineering from Cambridge University. Joining him in the co-founder seat is Jay Freeman. Jay is perhaps best known for having developed the Cydia installer. For those who have ever jailbroken an iPhone, you will no doubt have heard of the Cydia software. The final co-founder to make up this trio is Gustav Simonsen. He is a developer who was previously one of the core Ethereum devs on their security team. These credentials are no doubt well placed at a project as technically advanced as the Orchid network. One can see why those VCs were so willing to back the project when it initially raised. I want to wrap up this review now with some concluding thoughts. Firstly, I'm happy to see that we now have alternative to centralized VPN services. Online privacy is becoming a scarce commodity and placing our trust in traditional VPN providers is risky. The ORCID protocol itself has some pretty advanced technology that I've only just scratched the surface of. A new VPN protocol, probabilistic nano payments, stake weighting, the list goes on. Moreover, the project seems to have some pretty experienced team members who have been around the blockchain. See what I did there? This experience extends beyond blockchain technology as they've worked on other open source projects and are well regarded in the broader investor community. The team also tapped some external brains when it came to auditing their OXT smart contracts. Consensus is perhaps one of the most well-known Ethereum development companies. Now, of course, it would be remiss of me not to mention some of the challenges that face the project. Firstly, you have to wonder how likely the average VPN user is to switch to Orchid. How much simpler are they really making the user experience? Large VPN providers have developed pretty strong offerings with a multitude of servers in hundreds of locations around the world. They've made their programs easy to use. So easy to use that in fact my gran was recently watching some geo-blocked Days of Our Lives episode on her $5 VPN. So adoption of Orchid won't be easy. Another concern that I currently have with OXT is that the trading is still incredibly volatile and is restricted to one exchange. Either way, I would be cautious when approaching the OXT markets. And that, my fellow crypto fans, is my review of the Orchid network. However, what really matters now is your opinion. What do you guys think of the project? Anyone considering OXT? Hit me up below. Also, if you like this video, then please do like this video. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll be seeing you guys very soon.